All right, hey, good morning, everyone. Welcome to uh, my presentation. My name is Kwa Hai, and I am responsible for product management of all the retail solutions that PTC provides. So um, just a quick show of hands. How many folks in the room are actually, uh, let's say, a retail professional working with either a footwear uh, a brand, an apparel brand, maybe a, uh, a retail brand like Nordstrom, Target? Anybody? OK, well, either way, um, <laughs> I hope all of you get some value out of this. You know. When we think about augmented reality, right, retail most often bubbles up as, let's just say, one of the most popular domains of application for augmented reality. And uh, a lot of the applications of AR or XR for retail is quite obvious. Um, most of the folks that have been working in this space have applied XR in retail to the consumer experience, right? Being able to, let's just say, provide the customer or the consumer with a more informed buying decision. And then oftentimes, XR is actually provided to maybe deliver a moment of delight to the end user prior to a purchase or even after a purchase. What I want to do today, though, is actually broaden the scope of XR within retail. I think there are actually a lot more, let's just say, opportunities of application for uh, uh, XR in retail. And hopefully, uh, this uh, session here will maybe either excite you for applying uh, XR in different ways with retail, or maybe inspire you to do so. So when we think about um, you know, the application of augmented reality, virtual reality, mixed reality within the retail space, there are really three key areas or three key areas of focus that can be applied. We've already spoken about customer experience a little bit, so I'm not going to dedicate most of my time to that because I think those are obvious uh, applications. Instead, what I want to direct your attention to is the application of XR for design and merchandising. Now, when we think about design and merchandising, XR becomes really interesting there because it really does two things. It improves the way that designers, developers, merchandisers can be more efficient, and it also improves their ability to, uh, let's just say, make better decisions during the product development process. Now, why is efficiency and better decision making important for the retail space? Well, if you know anything about the retail market, there are really three major pressures that retailers you know, face. When I say retailers, that could uh, include apparel brand owners and footwear brand owners. Uh, really, you know, they're pretty obvious because we as consumers live this as well, right? We're all consumers of retail goods. The first one is the need for fast fashion. Brands like Nike, Adidas, Burberry, Ralph Lauren, Target, Nordstrom, whomever, we're constantly trying to find ways to deliver products to market that imbue the trends that resonate with their consumers. And they're trying to always do that as fast as possible. The second thing here is that uh, you know, when you think about the retail market, it's been transformed quite significantly over the past five to seven years. Okay? All of us as consumers can really appreciate the fact that the way that we've purchased products has changed. We are now digital consumers, right, or digital customers. Uh, my wife does this a lot, you know, where she buys online. I'm sure all of you do this as well. Um, she buys online, and when she buys online, she can buy and search for products any time of day or night, right? And she can, let's just say, uh, choose to compare and shop based on price uh, and or delivery period. In fact, sometimes she actually pays a little bit more because she actually wants that product sooner, right? She doesn't want to wait a week. She wants to have it delivered in two days or maybe the next day. So as consumers, we're very demanding. As digital consumers, we're very demanding. And hence, there's that really uh, important need to compress cycle time for uh, um, uh, retailers. And then the last pressure here is uh, the globalization of the retail industry. Over the past, let's just say, 10 years, retailers have had to become more and more effective at leveraging both finished good uh, providers, factories, as well as raw material suppliers that are located halfway around the world, right? Whether it be a fabric mill based in India, or a factory in China, or maybe a zipper provider uh, uh, from uh, Eastern Europe. So with all the combinations of these th three different market pressures, the need for speed is really critical. And when we think about the need for speed, one way to address that is reducing cycle time, right? And that's really everyone's goal here. You know, it's interesting, um, if you ask a brand, uh, or a retailer, what's more important, speed to market or cost, nine times out of 10, they'll actually say speed to market. And this is often reflected by the fact that uh, retailers will actually pay more to deliver products on time if they're at risk of missing an in-store delivery date. Okay. So if they're at risk of, uh, let's just say, shipping products on time, they'll actually change their transportation from, let's just say, ocean freight to air freight. The overnight products from a distribution center to a store or from a factory to a distribution center. Of course, when you change your dis distribution from ocean to air, the costs rise dramatically, but they're okay with that. They're okay with taking that margin hit because time to market is so important. 
Now, when we talk about time to market, why is that really important? Well, it's because of us, the consumers. So it's interesting here. BCG did a study not too long ago on the apparel industry. And what they wanted to analyze was how long does it take for a trend to disseminate into the mass market? It used to take one year for a trend to be, let's just say, hot or popular, and to have that be realized or manifested as a product or a product feature that you know, all of us as consumers could buy. Anybody want to guess now how long that takes? Anybody want to venture a guess? It's three to five weeks. Think about that. If you are a retailer, if you're designing products, right, that ultimately means that when you see something that might be trending, you have basically three to five weeks to, do, to capitalize on that information, to capitalize on the trend that's resonating with your customer base. Of course, it's virtually impossible to deliver new products to market in three to five weeks, almost impossible, okay? But as, let's just say, you know, software developers, IT professionals, it's really our goal to figure out how we can help uh, uh, folks do that. Now, one of the different ways that we can do that is focusing on design and development efficiency. Okay, Kurt Salman, which is a consultancy that specializes uh, in a lot of different industries, but retail being one of them, did a study recently and asked a whole bunch of retail professionals, where do you see opportunities for improving time to market, since time to market is so critical for you? Design development efficiency was actually the top, let's just say, inefficient area that they've all identified. And they're actually asking, you know, how can we improve this? And ultimately, my message for you today is, AR, XR can be a great way to do that. Okay, so how can we improve that with uh, uh, augmented reality? How can we improve design and development with um, augmented reality? So, you know, earlier when I showed that three to five week cycle, the reality here is, in order to develop products, new products to market, a typical apparel brand like Ralph Lauren uh, or Burberry usually will take 40 to 50 weeks, right? So the clothes that you're wearing today or the clothes that you may have bought yesterday or last week actually started being designed and planned about a year ago, right? Um, pretty interesting statistic there. So 40 to 50 weeks, how can we reduce that time down to three to five weeks? Or how can we at least reduce it maybe to half that time? Well, when you think about the way retailers work and brands work, it's a very highly iterative and collaborative and time-consuming process. And the reason why is because the teams that work on product designs are geographically dispersed, right? You might have a design center in Paris, in Milan, in New York, in San Francisco, in Chicago. You have factories halfway around the world creating physical samples or physical prototypes. You've got trim providers, fabric mills, you know, in other parts of the world trying to ship all that information or uh, ship all those samples um, to the factories and actually to the design centers for them to review. And of course, you know, in the retail space, as you can imagine, a lot of the product design, product development processes are mired in, I'll call, the physical world, right? I need to see what that fabric looks like before I approve it. I need to see what that button looks like so I can ensure it's the right shade of red. I need to see how all that is assembled together before I give my final stamp of approval and send that spec over to production or to, to a, a, a factory. So that's why it takes you know, 40 to 50 weeks to design that shirt or that shoe that you're wearing today. Of course, XR is a great way to actually shorten and compress that cycle time. What am I talking about? Well, AR, for example, can actually be used to help visualize a product line during the merchandising line review process. For those of you who aren't familiar with the line review process, basically it's uh, a continuous cycle of review during the entire development phase where the, uh, uh, different key stakeholders are evaluating different things about products. So the stakeholders, the designers, the developers, the merchandisers, meaning the product line managers that are uh, at these brands will get together, okay? Uh, they'll get together typically in a physical meeting space, a design studio or meeting room, and they'll start to evaluate different criteria. They'll evaluate product line aesthetics, they'll evaluate costs and uh, uh, margins, and oftentimes that evaluation is done in a very disconnected way. Okay? Uh, I've been in countless uh, customer sites where I've walked into, uh, let's just say, a meeting room, and I see left on the table printouts and spreadsheets of financial information, right? How much is this gonna cost to make? How much is it gonna wholesale for? How much is it gonna retail for? What are our margins? How, much, how many uh, uh, units are we gonna buy from factory X versus factory Y, right? Of course, that's gonna influence margin. Where are we selling it? Because that's gonna influence margin as well. And then on top of that, oftentimes when I go into these design centers and I look at the walls, I see printouts of 2D sketches, okay? Sketches of what the products will look like sketches from the designers, and those sketches may be hand-drawn sketches or they may be Adobe Illustrator sketches. But the reality is that entire process is very disconnected and inefficient and uninformed. We can actually change the way, though, that the line review process works. 
And we can actually shorten that cycle time because what we can do is we can actually deliver all that information that they need, that criteria, right, the cost information, the margin information, into an iPad form factor, and then combine that with augmented reality. So instead of waiting for a physical sample to ship from a factory out in, let's just say, you know, um, Vietnam, and waiting for you know, two days a week for that to happen, we can now give the different stakeholders a really good sense of what a product is gonna look like prior to actually them getting a physical sample. So what can they do now? Well, they can make aesthetic design decisions, they can provide design feedback and review, right? And then they can evaluate costs and margins against that aesthetic, they can adjust buy quantities if they'd like, and they can all do that right away because they have access and they, uh, to the, uh, 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 the visuals of the products that they're designing before the actual physical products are in hand. So to give you an idea of what that looks like, I have a little demo video here that hopefully uh, will highlight the use of AR in the designs. Um. This is what they do today, right? They look at these 2D sketches. But now let's see what it looks like in augmented reality. What I like about this demo here is that it really highlights how the power of AR can be used to give the designers and developers a good sense of what products look like, even if those products aren't in hand. You know, it's as if the products, the actual physical samples from the factory are there with them. Okay, so you know, uh, before I go on to the next application of AR here in the space, as you can see, that iPad app used AR as a feature, right? It wasn't the reason for the existence of that app, but it's actually a feature to enhance the way that the designers, the developers, and the merchandisers could, could, good, could get a good sense of what their products would look like. Um, it combined you know, rich metadata, the product information, as well as the aesthetics of that product so they can make their line review decisions. Now, moving on here. AR can also be used to improve the real-time collaboration of sample reviews, right? Um, as I mentioned earlier, you've got dis geographically dispersed teams that are working with factories halfway around the world. And one of the great applications of AR is being able to leverage what I'll call, you know, the quote-unquote service use case, but apply it not for service, but for actually design feedback. So what I mean about that, uh, what I mean by that is leveraging AR so that factories can create physical samples and then leverage iPads and iPhones to actually highlight what those physical samples look like in a real-time live stream with the end users or the designers back at uh, the design centers. And then both parties can actually see those physical samples at the factory and start to mark up, right? Oftentimes, when you think about the way that sample reviews are done in the retail space, you know, the, the uh, uh, end users will take photos of the different physical samples and mark them up, right? Move the hemline up half an inch or move this button two inches over to the left, or take that pocket and reduce its height by half an inch. 
And oftentimes, that information is very textual. They type out those comments using AR and using uh, pro uh, products like uh, PTCC's uh, Vuforia Chalk. What we can do then is actually enable both, different, both geographically dispersed parties to work together to create these annotations and very well clear up uh, uh, any, uh, let's just say, misconceptions about that feedback. Now, one of the other things that I want to do here is actually talk a little bit about how um, uh, the customer experience can change uh, with augmented reality and why it's important as well, right? So moving beyond design and merchandising, captivating the customer is also critical to sales success, not just reducing cycle time, but actually driving higher uh, uh, re retail, um, or sorry, driving higher revenue. So XR is really important in this space because today we're all faced with the abundance of choice, right? You know, as I said earlier, consumers can actually buy products at any point in time, they can comparison shop. But products alone aren't good enough nowadays. Instead, there's a desire for all of us as consumers to have experiences. Those experiences could be experiences with the product, they could be experiences with the actual purchasing decision, or they could be experiences post-sale as well. And one of the nice things about AR, of course, is being able to leverage all of this to actually serve out a number of different use cases, right? Be able to ignite interest prior to purchase, being able to, let's just say, provide product information, being able to help the customer visualize what a product looks like, right? IKEA's Place app is a good example of that, as well as being able to provide post-sales opportunities. Um, one of the interesting things here is that we've been working with brands that have uh, asked us, well, hey, once a consumer buys a product, right, and has it you know, in his or her wardrobe, how can then we provide to them an idea of what new products can be actually purchased that coordinate with what they just purchased. And AR is actually a good example of that, right? Imagine going into your wardrobe, taking out a jacket, and then finding out, hey, here's a new shoe or new belt or new ja uh, a new shirt that would go along with that. So we've been ideating and innovating uh, on different ways to actually captivate the customer during the post-sale process as well. So in conclusion, I'm gonna leave you guys with one interesting stat here about the power of AR in the actual uh, buying uh, phase here. You know, when we um, took a look at this, you guys may have seen this stat somewhere, but uh, basically the power of AR is uh, quite impressive when it uh, talks about captivating the customer. So 40% of customers are willing to, be, to pay more for a product if they could experience it through AR. 61% of shoppers prefer to shop at stores that actually offer this kind of experience. And the reason why is because it provo uh, provides them an informed buying decision. And 71% of shoppers uh, at a retailer would uh, actually come back more often if they had an AR experience. So with that, hopefully what I've done today is given you guys an idea of how AR can be applied within the broad spectrum of, of retail, both on the product development side as well as on the selling side. Thanks for your attention. Awesome, thank you so much, Quant. And a couple of questions on Slido for the speaker. All right. So it looks like we have one from the audience. So, so quick question, yes, please. Well, one thing I notice, especially, uh, thank you for your presentation. One thing I notice in terms of the augmented, as you represented in the uh, app, the image is very static. It doesn't give you a sense of the weight of the fabric. And what is being done in that sense, both as a customer and user AR experience and in the business, to demonstrate how fabric falls on the body? Yeah, it's a good question. So there are actually 3D, let's just say apparel designers, uh, I should say designers, uh, 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 software companies that are focusing on that right now. And a number of them have innovated on ways to actually provide real-time simulations of a fa how a fabric drapes. And when I say real-time, like literally, if you put on a dress and you lift up the dress and let it go, being able to see how that flows. So all we, what we need to do is ensure that, let's just say, those simulations become more accurate and then be able to take those simulations as they're calculated in real time and serve that out. But I would venture to guess that in about, I want to say 12 to 24 months, we'll start to be able to actually see that being applied to the consumer space. The, the technology is, is, is really this far away to, be, to being able to um, be available.